all together. You know, I had to actively stop watching his Instagram reels. A bunch started popping up. I'm like, I want to save this for the reaction. For the full stand-up special. For those who are wondering, we are doing this video with Akash Singh's permission. I reached out to him and he said, go for it. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's some... Oh, He's going nice. full hour. This is super cool because yeah. it's a combination of cultures. Exactly. And like Much like him, right? Yeah, much like him. It's very representative of who he is. Oh my goodness. That's dope, Get dude. it, girls. That is dope. Bravo. Wow. I'm really... <laughs> this makes me happy. so cool. Yeah, look at, look at the audience. Yeah. One guy in the front is like, <laughs> yeah. yeah! One dude in the front. Everyone else is like, what is happening, Beta? <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing make, intro. Make sure you follow Akash Singh on his YouTube channel, by the way. Yes, show him some love. And Flagrant Podcast as well with Andrew Schultz and Akash Singh. Oh, he got this sponsored too. Good job. Oh, no, slick. He had the mic in his pocket. <laughs> nice. In his jacket. I love his fit as well. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you. Give it up for UTD Lux on the dance. Amazing. He's always representing. Like he'll wear a shower con shirt as well. Yeah. That was crazy. Had her feet always on the representing. Set, like, me. That didn't impress you, yo. You just sit here, mad casual. Yeah. Okay, miss. Call them out. What's your deal? Just terrible posture, whole body language. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. It just it seems like you're very unimpressed with everything that's happening right now. Maybe I'm being insecure, but I really do kind of feel like this girl hates me. This is crazy. Uh. She hate me. That's crazy. How old are you? 16. That's why. I'm not talking to you no more. That's <laughs> oh, you guys are adorable. <gasps> How did y'all meet? Dating app. Which one? Which one? First question. Muslim what? That isn't. What is that? That sounds like a different kind of dating app. <laughs> oh, he's analyzing, he's analyzing her ethnicity. He's like, wait, hold up. She's not white. What did you say? She's what? not white. That's what they all say. <laughs> you sneaky bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not not white, what are you? Pakistani. Pakistani. Get the out of here. Stand up. Stand up for the people. Stand wow. Up. That's hard to believe. Wow. Maybe I can believe it. Was she just born there? Or she's like, that's her blood. There was a lot of mixing back in the day during the mountain passes for trade and stuff like that. So it is possible. Jay Walker. Jay Walker. <laughs> this is a bitch blade, bro. <laughs> wow. My was comfy for you. <laughs> a bitch blade. Wow. Damn, dog. She was probably with the white people, like, get him! <laughs> she does look very white, though. Yeah. That's crazy. You're Pakistani. What's your name? Is it Pfizer? Pakistani is. F yeah. <laughs> Z in the middle and everything. <laughs> hey, man. Respect. You know what I mean? Because you clearly wanted a white girl, but you didn't want to disappoint your parents. <laughs> <laughs> so you did the next best thing. You know what I mean? Respect, you know? Respect. <laughs> respect, bro. I'm a little proud of you, yo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. Your parents have met her, I assume, right? Yeah, I knew. I knew. You, you ain't waiting. No, you're married. Oh, you didn't waste no time. <laughs> So Whoa. you just got married. That's beautiful, man. Aw. Congrats. Wow. Congrats. What a wow. I love that. Y'all had the proper desi wedding. Yeah. You're just getting out of that. Probably got PTSD still. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah. I'm so happy I married a brown woman. But that, that wedding, I wish we did a white wedding. That shit was... <laughs> white weddings, wonderfully simple to plan. You know what I mean? They get married in like a fucking farm. Or in Vegas. <laughs> Quick, in and out. Yeah. There's 12 guests because they don't love their families. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it can be small. 
and they barely believe in God, so their friend just becomes a minister on the internet. Right, <laughs> yeah. I've seen that. Like personal accounts. <laughs> you could have an entire white wedding for the price of an IHOP breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the average cost is like 30 grand. Same. Not in same Vegas. Same, you know? <laughs> Indian wedding, Daisy wedding, Pakistani wedding. Oh my God, bruh. We got mother wildlife roaming around. <laughs> Two of the four Disney kingdoms <laughs> in one hotel venue. Man, my wife was getting so mad because I wasn't planning and I was like, of course not. This wedding is for you. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I cannot wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I can wait to spend the rest of my money <laughs> <laughs> on a get-together. <laughs> and she would always hit me with the same line. You don't get it, babe. I've been dreaming of this day since I was three years old. <laughs> okay. Should be pretty easy to plan then, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good comeback. Savage. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good comeback. Yeah. 25 years I've never, thinking about this. You ain't I've never out. heard that as a comeback. <laughs> that's really good. Point. Quarter century of planning. Fuck you been doing? <laughs> I hate that. Well, I've been dreaming this day since I was... Well, you know what? Since I was three years old, I've dreamt of being in the NBA. <laughs> I don't see you rushing to run out Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Invite all our friends and family over so I can dunk on them for three and a half hours. <laughs> I know we would have to lower the rim considerably. <laughs> I still like to do it. <laughs> this is a good guy, I can tell. What do you do for a living? Probably make money. <laughs> Hotels? Wow. <laughs> Seats, huh? Uh huh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Drop the right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. knew yeah. it. You knew it. Could possibly be. <laughs> What's your last name? Is it Patel? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. I know. I know. As soon as they had said hotels, the rest of it just felt like dominoes. <laughs> Good you. There you go. So how'd y'all meet? We met at their wedding. <laughs> oh, at their wedding. So you guys know each other. Well, that's my sister. And how did y'all meet? The source. I f***ing love that! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! I like you more! You just, you just climbed up the charts for me! There you go, bro! Good for you! Why y'all not clapping at that, losers? <laughs> that was funny. I want you to remember this moment. This is a watershed moment, because now you know we let America brainwash us about arranged marriage. We all bought into that propaganda. Oh, that's so barbaric. How do you marry someone before you get to know them? How do you marry somebody after? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> that's a much better question, I think. Dating sucks, dude. That whole system is stupid. Arranged marriage is the best. <laughs> Here, it's all sorted for you. I only dated one woman my entire life, and thank God I married her, because I could not do that again, yo. <laughs> I could not. Yeah, I was gonna say, he had love what marriage, right? Awful. You know my least favorite part of dating? The fights. Oh. She would storm out of my apartment, I'd be falling apart. Texting her. <laughs> 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 Are we going to make it? <laughs> it embarrassing, dude. It was so pathetic. <laughs> but I had to because there's no security. Any fight could cost me this amazing woman. So I got to say all that. I can't sleep when you're mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way we shame oh, ourselves as dudes is interesting. Can, dude. Because we have our moments of emotion and then we like examine that's ourselves. Married is the best, bro. Now that's my wife. Now, if she storms out of our apartment, I'm just like... Where's she gonna go? <laughs> Bitch, where are you really going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be scared? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no, what will I do with this time to myself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm a 
might have a panic attack from the peace and quiet. <laughs> Cut that shit out, girl. Go ahead and take your little walk. <laughs> but for real, be back by seven. There's a new Shark Tank coming on. Huh? <laughs> Not waiting for hummus. you. I gotta see if Mark invests. <laughs> But I'm still trying to have a healthy marriage. That's incredibly important, especially for brown dudes. I hope you're fucking working on you for her. Because I don't know if y'all know this, there's a lot of negative stereotypes about Indian dudes. We're uh, abusive and we're alcoholics and we're all assholes. And that's fucked up because it's not true. I mean, it was true in my house, but that, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> My house, not every house. You can't do that. <laughs> but no matter what, you got to be better. Break the cycle. So I'm really growing a lot. And I've learned things that nobody else will tell you, but I got you. <laughs> Fellas, advice. <laughs> if you are with wifey right now and you love her, the best thing you can do is to not care. What? <laughs> You see how you looked at him the second he started laughing? <laughs> you look at her, bro. You, you, right? I'm right, right? Not care about like 90% of the things she wants you to care about. <laughs> and it's not for the record because women are illogical or hysterical or any, any hacky shit like that. The fact is women are just more emotionally evolved than men. That's simple. Absolutely. Okay. That's a nice way to say okay. it. Okay. You know, All right. No, fellas. When your girl has an emotion, she expresses it. <laughs> what the what? hell is even that? <laughs> That's insanity. That's not how men are raised. No, we are taught when you have a feeling, you bury it deep down in a dark place. And then every six months, you punch a hole in a wall for nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Relate. We're not allowed to do that anymore, though. <laughs> so we're not used to a woman just having her emotions and letting them out. We keep trying to fix it. There's nothing to fix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Oh, I love you so much. I can't. I'm so excited to spend the rest of my life with you. We never spend any time together. <laughs> Strap in, boys. She's on Space Mountain. <laughs> But the best way to allow her to do this is you do this. <laughs> like I said, she's on Space Mountain, living. <laughs> you, it's, it's a, a small I, I thought he was going to say that. <laughs> I'm telling you, my wife is mad at me. The words just bounce off my forehead. <laughs> I can't believe you. No, yeah, me neither. I, uh... <laughs> I'm not lying. I don't want to lie to my wife. I can't believe her because I wasn't listening. You understand? <laughs> it's honest. And that might sound callous to some women, but I promise you do not want a man as emotionally evolved as you. Oh. Can you imagine both people doing this? <laughs> Unsustainable. Picture for one second your man saying to you, what's that supposed to mean? Guys, <laughs> 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 a collision course. <laughs> you know, another thing I do sometimes when uh, my wife and I are fighting is, uh, this is riskier. This takes a level of expertise to pull off. Uh, <laughs> when my wife is upset at me, I will start smiling at her. <laughs> oh, God. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's dangerous. It mm -hmm. is initially received exactly how you're picturing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I tell you how I feel and you laugh in my fucking face? I can't believe you don't even take me seriously. But like I said, I'm learning. So I explain to my wife. I say, look, baby, you don't understand. I don't take you completely seriously right now. <laughs> How is, he, how is he gonna walk yeah. out of this? I take your emotions very seriously, but the way you are expressing them, I understand that's just the best way you know how in this moment, and underneath that, I still see the pure 
precious person that I married. Wow. Oh, wow. That's wow. pretty good. That's an... I, I would just be like... That would disarm her, oh. yeah. And again, that's real. I see that. So now that she understands me, I then explain to her, also, if I took you completely seriously, I would have to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who you think you're talking to. <laughs> Possibly be me for real. Otherwise, I would have to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, and I know I can't fight, but I'll kick your ass. <laughs> You're talking a lot for someone who's five two. <laughs> That's a really risky joke. Yeah. yeah. That's real. Oh God. Miss Luria. Yeah. Did you? Oh, that's a real that? Indian water. Yeah. That's what I do during fights. You know what she does during fights? Is she'll accuse me of gaslighting her. <laughs> what the hell is that doing? <laughs> I have actually learned what gaslighting is, fellas, and it's important that you learn too. Gaslighting is something women made up to win arguments. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. My goodness. These are like a draw four card in Uno. <laughs> Anytime you're losing, just gaslight. <laughs> yeah, they're always looking for like an ace in the hole. Nah, I'm playing gaslight. For the argument. It's actually a real thing, but most dudes don't know because only dickheads do it. <laughs> Fellas, what gaslighting actually is, is um, sometimes a woman tells the man that she loves that he hurt her feelings, but instead of listening, he makes her think she's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And that is terrible to do. I would never do that to my wife. I love her. I just think the bitch don't listen sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, we're married. We listen all the time, it's insanity. <laughs> but I have to tell you, there is also Female gaslighting. Facts. Uh -huh. Absolutely. <laughs> Suddenly got strangely silenced. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you should know every woman gaslights her man, but we don't catch it because they do it differently. Uh, okay, I need to hear this. You know what female gaslighting is? That's when a man tells the woman he loves she hurt his feelings, and instead of listening, she makes him think he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. Basically calling him a wuss. By the woman you love? <laughs> Where you finally get vulnerable like she's begged you to do? And you say, hey, that hurt my feelings. And she goes, <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it hurt you when you put a vagina? <laughs> I am telling you, ladies, do not settle for less than a good guy. But if you get one, also know what we are going through. That's all I'm saying. If you have a good guy right now, can I tell you a secret that he will never share with you? He is tired. <laughs> <laughs> let that motherfucker clap. Yo, how fucking dare you keep everyone clapping? <laughs> Yo, you let him be tired. No, yeah. what you fucking talking about? No, he's fine. I bet he tried to nap before this show and you're like, no, nah, we don't have time. <laughs> no, there's too much to do. We have to clean up because the cleaning ladies are coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My sister does that. That's bullshit. I know what that is. How much is he quoting his they wife? these random tasks to ruin your REM cycle. <laughs> and it's not your fault, but the job is tiring. Like, fellas, you ever be just in a room by yourself and all of a sudden you hear... <laughs> that happens. Aren't 
you kind of thinking, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> It's been eight minutes. <laughs> what could you possibly want? Can I not even watch the highlights of the game you made me miss, bitch? <laughs> but that's not how you say it, because you're a good guy and you love her. So you say it differently. If you're like me, how do you say it? Yes. Yes, babe. <laughs> <laughs> like a cuck. <laughs> <laughs> I die every time I do that. <laughs> because I'm lying to both of us. Mm -hmm. But that's my baby. I can't hurt her with honesty. Uh. <laughs> So all of a sudden, I turn into customer service. Just thank you for calling. <laughs> Fresh towels, y'all. See if we got some in the back. I'm telling you, ladies, if you have a good guy, do you know what he needs? A vacation. Again, not trying to vilify you, but you hear it all the time. A relationship is hard work. Yeah. Marriage is a job. Well, every good job gives you two weeks vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a good man, I promise you, I know what his dream vacation is. Because every good guy's dream vacation is your vacation. Amazing. We both Go win. Somewhere. I think that's a win-win. you want. <laughs> I will take out a mortgage to pay for it. Look, a shitty guy might want to go on his own vacation, cheat on you with another woman. I would never do that. I just want to cheat on you with solitude. <laughs> I love you. I would never bring another girl back to our bed, but I would sleep diagonally across that bed. <laughs> <laughs> like a backslash. <laughs> Can I cheat on you with the left side of the mattress, please, just once? Just a tip. I just want to see how it feels. <laughs> but that's the thing. You never go anywhere. Every time I look, it's you. <laughs> I go to work, it's you. I come home, it's you. I get a phone call, it's you. I get a text, it's you. I get a DM on Instagram. Really, bitch? <laughs> We don't have enough channels of communication. Sometimes you gotta send memes. Yeah, that's true. I wake up, it's you. I fall asleep, it's you. And while I'm asleep, you throw your legs on top of me just to remind me I have no freedom. <laughs> that's why they're doing it, fellas. It's not for comfort. Nobody's comfortable sleeping like a lowercase r. <laughs> what, is she a windshield wiper? <laughs> Not a natural position. <laughs> but she needs to remind you, no matter who you're dreaming of, she's still right here on top of you. Mm -hmm. That's why she gets mad when you move her legs. Isn't that strange? No matter how heavily your girl sleeps, when you move her legs off of you, all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> Bitch, you, mm, <laughs> I haven't been able to feel my feet for 45 minutes. <laughs> I thought I had diabetes. Oh, God. It's, because mm, I want some fucking blood flow. Uh, usually it's my arm. No, no, no. You would rather be trapped underneath you all night, like a Chilean miner. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> he wiped himself off at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That wasn't fair. <laughs> because the miners made it out. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he knew the response. <laughs> he knew what the response was going to be. No, I do make a lot of jokes and I tease her. And here's the thing, fellas. If you are lucky enough to get a good girl... There is nothing like it. The love of a good woman is indescribable. Overwhelming, it's so pure. Like, uh, this is an example of, of how amazing my wife is. And also, 
how big a bitch I am for her. This is <laughs> secondarily, okay? Look, first of all, not only have I watched the Titanic with my wife, I have also watched a documentary about the making of the Titanic with her. <laughs> and what's worse, I loved it. That was like, <laughs> the most embarrassing part is how much I loved it. It is almost as good as Gossip Girl, which he has also made me watch. <laughs> Chuck Bass is misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I never watched Gossip Girl. But this is a true story. We're watching this documentary, and I didn't know this about the movie, but a lot of the characters, even background people, were based on real passengers right. of mm-hmm. the Titanic. That's accurate. And if you've seen the movie, at the end, there's an older husband and wife, and he's trying to get her on a lifeboat, but she refuses to go on. Mm-hmm. She says, I'm not going anywhere without my husband, and then they died on the ship together. That's the owner of Macy's. I found out that was a true story. Beautiful story. I almost started crying watching it. My eyes are filling up with tears. I got this big lump in my throat. I'm sitting on the left of the love of my life. And I looked at her and said, get on a boat, bitch. This is... (laughs) 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 This is white people stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We're brown. We can barely even swim. So, yeah. <laughs> I love you too much. You have to live. And then my wife's real response, she said, let me tell you something. Unless we have children waiting for us at home, you are my husband until death do us part. Whatever happens to you Aww. happens to us. That was her real response. Wow. And I remember that moment forever being like, oh, God, this is how lucky I am to have this gorgeous girl who loves me in such an overwhelming, unconditional way. Wow. That's really Thank you, God, sweet. for this blessing. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's amazing. She would die on the Titanic with him. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> there was a much smaller part of me That was like... (sighs) Not even then can I get relief. (laughs) (laughs) Bitch. (laughs) You can't even let me die alone. (laughs) (laughs) What do I gotta do to get some me time? (laughs) That's very sweet of her, though. Yeah. We both believe in reincarnation, too. She's going to nag me into the next life. <laughs> Aren't you married for like seven lifetimes or something? Like I think beautifully silent minutes. And then I'm going to hear... <laughs> <laughs> you guys have kids? How many? Two. Two, that's beautiful. Boy and girl? Yes. Okay, good. My wife and I also are trying to have a baby. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. She doesn't know that yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, man. Now, she actually does want a kid, but I want one even more, which is, I know it's corny to say, but I've always wanted to be like a dad my whole life, I think. No, thank you. But what's different since meeting my girl is now I want to have a daughter more than I want to have a son. I never thought that'd be the case. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The idea of having a daughter just like her sounds so amazing. Because I want her to see what I've been dealing with this whole time. Wouldn't that be fun fun enough for all of us? Wait. Until she comes in the house, like, just loves to fight all the time for no reason. Get the fuck! Get the fuck! Wow, they ha ha! I wonder where she got that from. Oh, what a Scooby Doo mystery this is. <laughs> what if she's like him though? It's possible. Well, she's good. Yeah. You know, the bigger reason I want to have a daughter is. I'm kind of scared to have a son because I grew up in the 90s and we were never taught back then how to be soft with other men. 
So I'm worried I won't be able to access any softness from my son. With a daughter, that would be easy. Like if my daughter came up to me and was like, Daddy, I'm sorry I failed my math test. That's not gonna happen because our daughter will be Indian, but like, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's live in this candy land if we can. <laughs> and hypothetically, my daughter is like, oh, oh, Daddy, I'm sorry I failed my math test. It would be easy to be like, listen, baby girl, there is no failure, there is only learning. So as long as you learn from this and you give me maximum effort from here on out, I do not care what the numbers say, that's gonna take you further in life than any good test grade will. That's like what my Absolutely, dad would yeah, say. No, I that. <laughs> yeah, but I wanna hear what he says to I his know. son. Tell that to your daughter that I'm still not looking at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if my son was like, hey dad, I'm sorry, I got a B on a math test, I'd be like, obviously, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. At least your sister failed. You can learn something from failure. <laughs> what can you learn from a B? You know what I learned? You couldn't be any dumber. <laughs> be better. Feels like I'm raising a real B-tard, actually. <laughs> and then my wife was like, baby, what are you doing? I'd be like, what? I'm, I'm loving our son. That's, a, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You make it feel like shit a lot and probably question his sexuality once or twice. And... <laughs> Hopefully he turns into an upstanding human being. This is how I was taught that it's done. <laughs> That's a scary thing, man. But you know what's even scarier, this is what I was not ready for, is the pervasive nature with which society disrespects dads. It's built mm. in to the lingo. Example. Dad bod. If you make a oh. bad joke, like a really dad joke. pun, what do people call it? Dad joke. How dare we as a society question this man's sense of humor? Because let me tell you something about your dad. He was hilarious. <laughs> Until he met your mom. <laughs> then what happens? You have no idea how hysterical this man was. Every week, him and his homies would sit together and make the most horrendous jokes <laughs> about dead babies <laughs> and people in wheelchairs <laughs> and every minority. And it was a bucket of laughs every time. <laughs> then one day, your mom showed up, turned him into a human being, ruined everything. <laughs> Every time he said something funny and fucked up, she'd be like, babe, take it back. Why can't you be funny in a nice way? And that's what's left. Dad jokes. <laughs> Dad, can I have a cookie? I don't know, can you? <laughs> <laughs> you think he thinks that's funny? <laughs> no, but this is a broken man. <laughs> He's a POW in a war camp. <laughs> Dad jokes, they're disrespectful. <laughs> you know what's even more disrespectful? If a guy gets a little bit of a pot belly, oh, starts getting yeah. a little weight in his stomach, what do they call it? Dad bod. Oh, uh, this is. <laughs> Women love a dad this bod, though. Gets my goat. Oh, it's used both though, as an insult and as a compliment. Dad bod. The way we treat dad when he gets fat. Oh, look at dad's stomach. Da, 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 da. <laughs> 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 Put your ear in his belly button. You can hear the ocean. <laughs> what? Is that a thing? We never done that. No. I seen kids put their feet on it like he's a fucking ottoman. <laughs> when? What How about? dare you? Let me ask you something. What do you think your dad is supposed to look like? Because I will tell you a second thing. If your father has a six pack. He is cheating on your mother. <laughs> There's no other explanation. What else would this be for? Why are you in the gym? Don't you got t-ball practice or something? I'm telling you, a good dad is a fat dad. Because he gave up on his own life the second you were born. <laughs> <laughs> you 
He's not sleeping. He's stressed out. Yeah. I've noticed this too. I'll see like these happy family breakfasts. Sunday morning. Slice of bacon in the middle. Dad reaches for it. Mom slaps his hand. Babe, your cholesterol. And he's like, no, no, just let this happen. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the sweet relief. A slab of bacon is the only sliver of happiness he has. Because <laughs> he's a good dad. You could judge me if you want to, but I'll tell you what, if your dad is happy, you better be suspicious. <laughs> if you look at your dad's eyes and he's got like this sincere sparkle, look through his phone book. <laughs> I bet he got a couple text messages from Papa John's talking about sucking his dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad code name. <laughs> Why would you be See texting Papa guys? John? <laughs> I'll tell you, the only thing I don't look forward to with having children is everybody tells me, once you have kids, you have to start caring about politics. And no thank you. Because, <laughs> bro, you want to talk about being gaslit? I feel like normal people are being gaslit by both political parties. That's true. Okay. I believe that. Absolutely. Both sides have gotten so extreme, I, I don't even understand it. Like, look, uh, I grew up in Texas, born and raised. I have some crazy, yo, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> this is my home, and I have some crazy conservative friends whom I love. But I'll come back and talk to them and be like, wait, hold on, let me, uh, <laughs> uh, let me just, let me get this straight. So, you think you can catch gay? <laughs> like, you think if a gay guy sneezes on you, You'll start sucking his dick? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm no scientist, but I have never seen anyone being like, oh, oh. <laughs> bro. <laughs> he must have sat next to a homosexual on the subway. <laughs> oh. This is our third time, well, my third time watching this I section. fucking dudes. Because it was on Instagram. <laughs> And then I showed it to her. I'm like, I gotta show you this. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. oh, God, I hope this passes soon. Oh, I'm sick of this sore throat. <laughs> I'm gonna have to call out of work. It's really coming into both ends. Oh. That's terrible. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You got there, though. A little delayed, but you got there. <laughs> ah, man. Can I tell you another, uh, an honest thing, buddy? I wish homosexuality was contagious. <laughs> because if it was, science would eventually develop a vaccine. <laughs> and you anti-vax motherfuckers have a real dilemma on your hands. <laughs> That's where it ended. Yeah. I don't even care politically. I just want to watch the winds shift. All of a sudden, my conservative friends are like, hey, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you just got to trust the science. <laughs> I put my faith in Fauci. That's a good man doing God's work. <laughs> and for the record, I'm not letting liberals off the hook. I'm just as confused by the far left. People in New York City will yell at me. They'll be like, oh, okay, so just because a dude fucks dudes, you think he's gay. <laughs> that, that conversation is gonna become more and more prevalent over the next 20 years, I yeah. feel like. It's like, wait, hold on. Because 
Is this a trick question? <laughs> <I understand. laughs> yeah. I, I find that confusing I do too. I we need to evolve, okay? Like yeah. I said, I grew up in the 90s. We were wiling. We would see a dude doing ballet and be like, gay! <laughs> Bless you. I'm doing ballet on Sunday. <laughs> I can't believe we did that, bro. That's messed up. Ballet is difficult. A dude doing ballet is not automatically homosexual. He is probably homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> or the only straight guy in the room. That's not a statement of fact. It's just an educated guess based on probabilities. A strong hypothesis, really. <laughs> Ballet's hard as fuck, dude. But I'm gonna be honest, I am trying to get more liberal. Because I think about having kids and I've realized something. How do I put this? You know how we all have at least one grandparent who's like, really racist? Yeah. It's like an uncomfortable thing for everyone to deal with. You know what that is? That's a guy that got stuck in their time and then never evolved with society, right? And I don't know about you, but I do not want to be that 50 years from now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that scares me. I can't be that guy. So I'm trying to learn, but... <sighs> <laughs> it's hard. I mean, you get kind of solidified in your they era. They just make it hard, these liberals. <laughs> <laughs> They're always doing too much. Always. Like, this is a true story. A good friend of mine came out to me as being non-binary and I love them, and I accept their lifestyle, whatever it is. But the whole thing was just, first of all, they FaceTime me to tell me. <laughs> Come on, you can't text me this? <laughs> Send a mass email, BCC your boy. <laughs> 30 minutes, he had a whole rigmarole. Oh, Akash, I have to live my truth. I'm coming out of the closet as a non-binary. I hope you're not mad. I hope we can still be friends. Please don't be upset. <laughs> like, it's why? So I just stop them and be like, yo, come on, man. How could I ever be upset at you about something like this? I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I thought we were talking about computers this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> what is a non-binary? And then they got offended. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they were scoffing like, oh. <laughs> 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 Fucking. He was good on the pronoun. Attack this guy. They. Yeah. He only oh, slipped man. once. Man, a fucking emphysema flare up. <laughs> Non-binary just means I don't really care about being a man or a woman. And I was like, who does? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you see a guy walking around like, no, I am a male. And it is incredibly important to identify me as such. That guy's gay. <laughs> that is interesting, though, because like you, I don't feel like you're often thinking about. No. You know. Or he's yeah. Ben Shapiro. These are. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be someone who's transgendered and they want to be looked at as a man. Sure. Yeah. You know. I had to cut them off and explain to them, like, hey, come on now. I love you, y'all. I will die for you. You're not my family by blood, but you're my fucking family. But I do, absolutely, absolutely. I still love them however they identify. I don't give a fuck. But I do ask for a more honest conversation. Just sit me down, look me in my eyes, and say, hey, Akash, sometimes I want to suck dick. <laughs> God bless you, y'all. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I mean, I think I speak for every married man in this room when I say there's not enough dick sucking going on. In this <laughs> <laughs> I have thoughts about 
You the non-binary thing. Yeah. Based off what he's saying right now, and I'm like, it's a good, it's an interesting point he's making. Suck as much as you can. Let these merry girls know they got some competition bringing down their neck. <laughs> or dribbling down your neck, whatever. <laughs> Same to same, you know. <laughs> <laughs> same to same. Like I said, though, we gotta grow. We were taught our whole lives there's only two genders. And now I know not everyone feels that way, and I empathize. That sounds awful, so I'm trying to grow. I remember it was 2019, I looked up how many genders there were. Oh. Oh, God. You know how many genders there were? So many. 63. I cannot even. Hold on, it gets crazier. I looked it up again in 2021 because I was doing a show in Portland and I needed to study my enemies. <laughs> it's good to be informed. You know yeah. How many genders there were in 2021? 72. 72. Yeah. That's crazy. Is what? this not a misuse of time to <laughs> anyone else? <laughs> We added nine genders in a pandemic? Multiple millions died. We developed nine genders and three vaccines? <laughs> Honestly, two vaccines, because you can't count that Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> to be fair, we had nothing but time on our hands. Sure. To this show. I mean, for a lot of people. <laughs> wow, that's, that's dark. dark. <laughs> And to be clear, I am not saying 72 is too many genders. What I'm saying is 72 is too many anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what we're talking about. Even Baskin and Robbins has less flavors. Admit it out loud, but I'll say it. 72 is too many virgins. <laughs> 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 you just nodded at your girl and you're Muslim. I know. I know, bro. And I'm not trying to disrespect Muslims or Islam. All I'm saying is if it is, and they are right, and we are lucky enough to get up to heaven, I think we would all be like, Allah, thank you so much for letting me in. You are a great, gracious God. This is such a risky joke. I know. I just... <laughs> This is such a risky joke. I know. I don't know what to do with all of this. <laughs> wow. It is a little overwhelming. Uh, ha. Not trying to disrespect. But my definition of heaven was not 72 virgins. <laughs> it was... It's more like four... <laughs> 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 you know, I just, I did a lot of not fucking to get here, so I don't want to keep, you know what I mean? If I could offer you a little tradesy poo, <laughs> I will give you 72 virgins for just four s <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an 18 to 1 exchange rate. It's, that's basically pesos to dollars, really, when you think about it. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying there are only two genders. I don't believe that. But sometimes people get offended anyway. Like, that's bullshit, Akash. All 72 genders are valid and viable. Really? Tell me. Then name nine. Yeah. I'll make y'all a deal. If four dudes in here can name nine genders, I'll suck all your dicks right now. Wow! <laughs> wow, that's confidence. But also, what are the odds? Yeah, I mean... To completion, I don't care. <laughs> You're not allowed to use your phones either. What? Well, I looked it up again in 2023. You know how many oh. there were on the list I saw? 108. What? Wow, it went up. Again, I am not saying there's only two. I'm just saying it's not Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Where you keep creating new ones and I gotta catch them all. I'm tired. <laughs> so let's settle on a number. A generous number. Okay. 31. That's how many there should be. Like Baskin Robbins. Yeah, like Baskin Robbins. If it's good enough for Baskin Robbins, it's good enough for the rest of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
31 is a, it's a lot. That's still a lot. Yeah, it's still a lot. You, you can't keep up with Plenty that. Plenty options in a Baskin Robbins. Can you imagine you take your homie in a Baskin Robbins and he's looking around like... Ah. Not enough flavors. <laughs> you know, I'm just not seeing myself with any of these. <laughs> I think it would be like, man, you look like a rainbow rum raisin to me. Take one shot. <laughs> Spoiled. And I'm going to keep it more real. I think I have a right to talk like this as an Indian. <laughs> oh, okay. Because when I took a standardized test in high school and they asked for my ethnicity, well, hey, brown people, y'all know, what were the bubbles? White, black, Hispanic, Asian, other. Pacific Islander. Yeah, and other. other. I have never been called Asian in my life. Move to the UK. You'll be called Asian all the time. Pacific Islander is. <laughs> <laughs> but it was close enough. Is Hawaiian considered Pacific I Islander? I think so. I'm going to be honest, even if they added an Indian-Pakistani bubble and one of my Bangladeshi friends was like, whoa, 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 what is this about? I'd be like, yeah, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> what do you even need to take this test for? You're just going to be a busboy at a fancy restaurant. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I'm starting to analyze these things too. Why not only am why am I not more liberal, but why are these liberals always losing? Mm. Y'all some losing ass liberals. <laughs> Here's the thing I've realized about liberals. I almost always agree with their messaging, but they lose me on the marketing. Mm. Okay. They Interesting. Are very poor marketers, these liberals. Interesting. For example, I agree with the messaging. I hope we all do, okay. <laughs> that there is a problem with the way black people are policed in this country and it needs to change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. When's the other and shoe gonna drop? I 100% agree with. Yeah. The marketing was a little tougher for a guy like me because the term they came up with was defund the police. Guys, just take a look at me. <laughs> I am very full. <laughs> I didn't expect him to say that. I didn't see that coming. I didn't know he was going to go there. She said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and for the record, I'm not saying this arrogantly. I am not saying you want to. I'm simply saying if you did, what I'ma do. <laughs> I'm short, I'm slow, my spin move is not what it used to be. So absolutely yes, let's improve the police. Also, please keep funding them. To protect my booty hole. <laughs> From a breaking and entering. <laughs> <laughs> Again, great messaging, not so great marketing. Another example, I think we can all agree with the messaging, we should probably protect the planet. Marketing really dropped the ball on this one. Because the term they came up with was global warming. <laughs> Guys, literally half the planet thinks that sounds spectacular. <laughs> I know it's hot in Texas. But I travel. I've been in Minnesota and seen snow in September. <laughs> and if you told me on that day that the only problem with pollution is it gets hotter, I'd have walked outside and shot two aerosol cans in the air. <laughs> <laughs> like a Palestinian on 9-11. God damn. damn. God I'd have let it off. Oh my God. <laughs> God damn. Death the ozone. <laughs> Damn. Full commitment. That's too, that's so dark. Son, you know how amazing that sounds to someone who lives in New York? Let California sink into the ocean. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> huh? 
What do we lose? Silicon Valley and some silicone tits? I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Come to Manhattan. We got beaches now. <laughs> Again, good messaging, bad marketing. And the most egregious example is sadly the most divisive one. Okay. Now, I'm just going to say this. Whether you agree or disagree, let's just wait for the joke part, all of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I agree with the messaging that a woman should be allowed to get an abortion if she feels that is the only available option. Okay. That's messaging. <laughs> right. Again, messaging I agree with. Marketing, <laughs> easily the worst in human history because the term liberals came up with was pro-choice. Guys, the term pro-women was right there. <laughs> wow. That's actually yeah, a good point. Fair point. Fair point. You could be pro-women, but liberals were like, no, you know what people like better than women? Options. <laughs> <laughs> who, who likes choices that much? Has any of us sat at a cheesecake factory like, man, I wish this menu had a couple more pages. Yeah. <laughs> Was anybody taking the SATs like, hey, these questions either E, F, and G. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> really set this test off. No, fuck multiple choice. If the SAT was an essay test, I might be a doctor right now instead of yelling at y'all. <laughs> And that's the thing about conservatives. You might not agree with their messaging, but the marketing on point, fantastic. You might not agree with the messaging of being anti-abortion, but the term pro-life flames. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That is the greatest marketing in history. Imagine it has nothing to do with childbirth. You don't have no idea what these terms mean. And someone comes up to you and says, hey, are you pro-choice or pro-life? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'd be like, that sounds great. Pro-life? I mean, we could convert this we now. You'd be like, that's the easiest choice I've ever made in my life. <laughs> yeah, if you're totally ignorant to the definition. Yeah. I used to think I hated white women. Oh. I know, I know. I used to walk around being like, they're not the devil because they're white. They're white because they're the devil. <laughs> and it was so fun to say, I gotta be honest. <laughs> but I had to sit and say, yo, I don't want to hate an entire race of people. That's fucked up. And I realized it's not true at all. I don't hate white women. And I'm sorry I used to say that. Okay, who do you what hate? What I hate <laughs> is liberal white women. <laughs> More specific. Conservative white women, not that bad. <laughs> you know the most hateful thing one of them has ever said to me, bless your heart. That's not even, that's not even <laughs> what, that's supposed to be hateful? God, you're sweet. Oh my goodness, we can't all use some blessings? This bitch sending them straight to my heart. <laughs> How am I hate her? Oh, what a wonderful woman. And the second most hateful thing a conservative white woman has ever said to me I'll pray for you. <laughs> hey, thanks again. That bitch. sounds very authentic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are so sweet. That is thoughtful. Ah, oh, because I know she knows we believe in different gods. And just in case mine is wrong, she out here watching my six. <laughs> <laughs> your heart, bitch. <laughs> right back at you. That's the beauty of conservative white women. They don't cancel you because Christ will do it for them. <laughs> I don't have to do nothing. He's going to hell. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. And conversely, that is the danger of liberal white women. They're not religious. Oh. That means they're thinking... Hell does not exist. You gotta get him so here. I must make his life one. <laughs> and that terrifies me. I'm telling you, if I see a white woman at a show with a cross on her neck, I look at her like an American embassy. <laughs> I'm safe here. No harm will befall me in this space. But 
If she has a crystal on her neck? Uh oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is treacherous terrain. Oh. Purple hair. Let me tell you, if she got a Black Lives Matter button, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Brown lives are gonna stop mattering real soon to this bitch, I think. <laughs> That's why I act out. I like trolling white feminists. That's all. You know my favorite thing to do? I look them right in their eyes and go, you know what? I don't even believe in women's rights. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand it logically. I do believe That's such a in troll women's move. That's such a troll move. <laughs> That one makes sense to me. <laughs> I do believe in lesbians' rights. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, okay, gotcha, That's gotcha, important. Gotcha, yeah. That one makes sense to me. <laughs> I should probably explain. The main thing women can legitimately complain about is the fact that they make like 75 cents for every dollar that a man makes. And that is a terrible thing, truly. But <laughs> if you're a heterosexual girl, you're just gonna marry a dude, and now we both got a dollar seventy-five. <laughs> I would love for you to get this quarter. It goes into a joint bank account. <laughs> But these poor lesbian couples. <laughs> are trying to survive on a dollar fifty. <laughs> and that is injustice. That's something I'll march against. To be honest with you, we should both march against these gay dude couples making two. That's so stupid. Everybody's always like, how do gay dudes live in the best neighborhoods? Two dollars. <laughs> That's why they get to walk around wearing designer clothes. Meanwhile, these poor lesbians got to dress like Popeye. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> That's what's on clearance. <laughs> Actually, you know what? We, I need to sit for this next part, so let's do this. Okay. Is he gonna grab one of the chairs? Oh, it's a chair! I was wondering what they were. I, I thought they were stools, but I wasn't sure. I thought, I thought they were either stools or lights. <laughs> okay, let me get a water. Okay. So backstory before I explain what I'm about to explain. Um, my wife does this thing where we will be watching a TV show or whatever and she'll look at me with her beautiful brown eyes and say, um, babe, I need you to know if you ever cheat on me, I will cut your cock off <laughs> and kill you in your sleep. I know how I do it. I know where I bury the body. It's like a step-by-step -step thing, she always tells me. That's so why we're just kind of sitting there like, how did we get from modern family to this? Yeah, I like... Know. That's psychotic. That's what Dunphy said to trigger you. <laughs> but I'm faithful to my wife, so I don't usually trip on it. But then one time a few years ago, we were watching this movie, Wolf of Wall Street. Have you guys seen this? Mm -hmm. For those of you who have not, Leonardo DiCaprio's character is living the greatest life <laughs> any man. I mean, he is doing drugs and crashing cars and tossing midgets at targets. <laughs> this guy is basically the white DMX. <laughs> And it's incredible. But then midway through that movie, my wife looked at me and was like, if I found out you ever had sex with a hooker, I would something, 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 life insurance policy. 
<laughs> but for some reason, that time, it bothered me. And I could not figure out why for years. Because like I said earlier, I am faithful to my wife, and I honestly believe having an affair with another woman is the worst thing you can do to the one that you love. You are forming not just a physical, but an emotional connection with a woman who is not the one you promised your heart to. It's a betrayal on the deepest level, and I'm not perfect as a husband at all, but I have never come close, and I pray that I never do. Absolutely, absolutely. But a hooker? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> There's no emotional connection. What are you, what are you talking about? That is crazy. That is not an affair. <laughs> that is a business transaction. I, that, I don't know, but like maybe they see it that way in Japan. And I can honestly yep. say I have never solicited a sex worker. But I know why they exist. Let me explain something. A hooker is not someone with whom you have an affair. A hooker is someone who keeps you from having an affair. <laughs> They're doing God's work out there. <laughs> you know those nets Native Americans hang in the corner of their bedroom? Okay. Yeah, dream, dream catcher, catcher. Yeah. I have one. to catch nightmares. <laughs> God. A hooker is like one of those for affairs. <laughs> <laughs> She's a cream catcher. Oh. <laughs> You can laugh, it's okay. Don't cover your face, don't cover your face. Let it go, let it breathe. Let the laugh, remove both hands, just laugh, it's okay. <laughs> but again, I couldn't figure out why this moment bothered me because like I said, I never solicited a sex worker and I am faithful to my wife. So I was like, what is going on? And then I realized it's because this is the moment I learned I love my wife more than she loves me. <laughs> Interesting. And that hurts. Because like I said earlier, Marriage is a job, and we are managers at this marriage. And our primary job is to meet each other's needs. Mm -hmm. My wife has emotional needs I have to meet every single day. I have to talk to my wife every single day. And I don't mean casual conversation, that's easy. No, no, this is put my phone away. Make deep eye contact. <laughs> Emotional engagement, thoughtful response. Remember the name of every one of her dumbass coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she barely liked them bitches. <laughs> Thanks, put her, put her on blast. But I do it every day. Because when you're married, it is your job to meet your partner's needs. Okay. But if I can be honest, I'm not always in the mood. Ah. Uh. <laughs> For whatever reason, I had a long week of work. I have a headache. <laughs> I'm feeling gassy. I <laughs> think <laughs> quotes. But I swear to you this. <laughs> if a service existed <gasps> where a mysterious man came to our home to listen to her in the middle of the night and talked this bitch's ear off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just talk the shit out of my wife. <laughs> talk her good. <laughs> In the bedroom, in the bathroom, on the kitchen counter. Get on the floor if you have to. Just talk, talk, talk all night long <sighs> until she has nothing left. You'd feel and jealous. She's gasping for oxygen, <laughs> panting even. Her deepest conversational fantasies filled. 
And then, and this part's important, he disappears into the darkness, never to be seen again. I would be a platinum level subscriber. <laughs> That's dangerous though. You don't think I would have a VIP pass for Uber Cheats? <laughs> Of course I would, because what kind of person would I be to deprive my partner of their needs because I'm not in the mood? <laughs> not everybody's feeling this <laughs> because they're afraid of their girlfriends or wives. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I dug to the root of the issue. This story is not about a hooker. It's about what that hooker represents. <laughs> Injustice, inequality. <laughs> Fellas, we ain't laying on hooker rock, hooker rock, <laughs> landing on us. <laughs> <laughs> because my wife is also supposed to meet my needs. But here's what I've learned. If I can't meet my wife's emotional needs, I'm a bad husband. And if my wife can't meet my physical needs, I'm a bad husband. <laughs> Facts. What the hell is that? I can't use them same corny lines on her. All you ever want to do is talk me. <laughs> it's like as soon as I step in the door, you try to jam your talk down my throat. <laughs> what am I, just a mouth and ears? <laughs> just a couple of holes for you to stick your words in? <laughs> And to be clear, I am saying all of this as a feminist. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Let me be clear. I am not saying, ladies, that your husband should go out after this show and solicit a sex worker. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is you should do it for him. <laughs> And not because he deserves it, but because you deserve it. <laughs> That's a way to spin it. Yeah. Because like I said, we are both managers at this marriage. There are certain jobs we have to do. Well, ladies, I can't help but notice, once you get married, there is one job in particular you <laughs> never seem to want to do anymore. <laughs> Just outsource you it. You seem to think you're <laughs> above it. <laughs> and can I tell you something? You are. You have been promoted to wife. You're a manager now. <laughs> you don't need to do these entry-level tasks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to spin this. <laughs> that is intern's work. <laughs> Ask Hillary. Ooh. Damn, way to bring that back. God. Yeah. But here's the thing, the job still needs to get done. <laughs> and you know what a good manager does? When there are jobs that need to be done, but she doesn't feel like doing them. Delegate. Outsource she it. delegates. Yeah. <laughs> So I leave you with this. Ladies, prostitution is not your man having an affair. It is you outsourcing. <laughs> and that's how any company thrives. Yo, you guys were fucking amazing. I'm gonna go. Thank you so much. Have a good night. God bless. Thank you, guys. Uh, where's my wife? Aww. Oh, he, he didn't color correct this part for some reason. Oh, with the dog. Gaslight department. I love her so much, and I know I make all these jokes. First of all, it takes an amazing woman to be willing to let me do that and just laugh. <laughs> and this is, all the jokes aside, this is my, I hate the term partner because it makes it sound like I just don't want to be homophobic. And... <laughs> 
but this is my partner. She consults every big decision. She talks me down when I'm in shitty moods. She did everything a wife is supposed to do. She accepts me at my worst, and she helps me be my best. Aww. Aww. Um, she's, she's not that patient when I'm, when I'm sick, but she, she nurses me to health. And uh, this is our dog, by the way, Happy. Love you. Aww. Uh, and and she, uh, she has definitely seen me at my poorest, and then she nagged me until we got richer. <laughs> uh, I love you so much. You are amazing in every way, and you're so special. And thank you for being with me through all of this. And I could not have done any of this without you. So thank you guys so much. I love y'all. I love y'all. Uh, I love you guys. I'm a mosi mosa, namaste, all that. Thank you guys. Y'all have a good night. Get home safe. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so fucking much. Thank you. Thank you. I was smiling throughout. Yeah. No, and for laughing sure. a lot. That was that was really really good. Yeah. That was just like solid bangers for a whole like hour and 15 minutes yeah damn the non-binary thing it's like it's such a it's it's like a sensitive conversation like this this is an interesting thing about today's climate is like i have questions and curiosity yeah and i get afraid sometimes to make those questions and, and curiosities public for fear of being shamed somehow and putting being put in the stocks of the internet absolutely just for, just for being confused and being made to look like a bigot when i'm just like but i don't get it like you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I have friends that are non-binary and I love them all the same. I don't, my feelings, just like how he felt, my feelings towards them don't actually change, but I'm just like confused about the situation. And I'm like, so are, are you into dudes? And then the response is no. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, what is the what is the thing? Like, I'm so confused. It's just like they just and, don't want to be identified as like male or female. Right, but that same person was like, have you seen dudes? I'm like, yeah, but you just <laughs> said the thing that you said. I, okay, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna shut up because yeah. I don't get it. Because like, to me, non-binary is no different from bisexual. It's like, that's the like non-binary. Bisexual means that you're sexually attracted to two genders, to, 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 to men and women, yeah. right? But non-binary means that you, you could just, be a straight dude you and just a lesbian. Don't wanna, you just don't want to identify as male or female. You are just what you are. Some days you might be like, oh, I'm feeling like very masculine today. And then another day you're like, I'm feeling very feminine. So I want to just but isn't that just life know. that's okay this is where i get confused yeah. i'm like isn't that just how people will be like sometimes you just feel today i feel like wearing a rainbow t-shirt <laughs> like, wear a rainbow you know t -shirt. And, then, and then other days i want to look you know fly i don't know like i'm just not pressed about it i suppose it's like it's it doesn't it doesn't have a free rent in my head i guess right you know yeah. i'm just i'm just trying my best to live life it, i just it, find it baffling that there's like over a hundred different uh genders right now and i'm just like oh, I'm just very curious as to what they are. Like, I can't wrap my head around it. That's so many. Well, I, I think the reason why I get confused is because I so closely associate coming out of the closet with a sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. So when you say I'm coming out of the closet as non-binary or whatever, I'm like, okay, so that's tied to a sexuality then for sure, right? Right. And so if you're non-binary, that means you go both ways, you're bisexual. <laughs> that's like, that's right. I know it's not the same, right, right, but it's right. like, it, it just feels so tied together. As, as I guess was what I'm saying, even though people will probably argue me in the comments to hell about like how I'm stupid and wrong and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, you're right. I'm, I'm wrong. I'll shut up. I think it's just like, you know, you know, you know what Akash is talking about where he's like, I don't want to be that grandpa who's like the one who I'm fighting it every day. Yeah, like I'm fighting it every day <laughs> because I was born in an era like yeah, I'm just like him. Like I grew up in the nineties. And so I'm like things were okay and now they're not. I'm like, but they were okay and I like solidified with them being okay. But here's the thing. You know? So it's like you so want to like evolve. educate yourself yeah. and evolve and yeah. stuff. But it's hard to do that when you ask questions and you're trying to like just learn genuinely learn and ask questions because you want to be better yeah. but then people get angry at yeah, you yeah. and you're like wait but people get how, indignant how am i supposed to learn if you won't have a conversation with me like i really want to i want to be better yeah it all kind of gets 
weirdly lopped into the notion, the broader notion of it's not the job of the oppressed to educate the oppressed. Sure, there is but, that for but, sure. But, but I'm like, but I don't, I don't know that this necessarily belongs in that camp in that folder but what if you did the homework and you're like still confused yeah yeah <laughs> you know like when you're in school you do the homework you do the homework you, and you ask questions and you ask questions yeah. it's like i don't i don't understand can you explain but even this? that can be misconstrued as somehow like being ignorant you know that's like you ask questions i don't know Never mind. This is getting into a weird area. Let's talk about the special. It, well, yeah, go ahead. So I, I just thought like some of the spins he's putting on things is very, is quite interesting. I would love to know what his wife said about the last 18 minutes about the hooker thing. And I'm like, so when he leaves the stage and they're in the car with with Happy or, the, or whatever the name of the dog is, yeah, is it just those are just jokes, right, babe? No, you know what I, I mean? I think I think that a hundred percent he's super loyal to his wife. I don't think he would ever do anything to jeopardize that or to hurt her. Like yeah. I. I, I buy that he loves her so much. Yeah, he's you know? very outward about it. Yeah. yeah, it's they're very sweet. Yeah. So I think it's just jokes, and I think that the joke was really good because, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you know, he's he's making a good point. But like, you know, recently we've been watching Shogun, and culturally, sure. like, Japan's different. Japan's different yeah. in that way, and so it would be quite common for a wife to be like, "Wow, I'm so privileged. I could." buy a night for my husband with this geisha. extremely accomplished courtesan or geisha yeah, you yeah, know yeah. um well, that actually, was a big deal i read um i forgot where i read this it was ages ago on the internet before myspace <laughs> there was that's how ba far back that's this quite goes some time <laughs> but it was something about how this dude was married to a japanese woman and they were having issues in their marriage and she literally said something to the, i'm uh paraphrasing horribly because I just don't remember exactly what was said. But what she was implying was, you know, it sounds like you just need to sleep with another woman. And the guy was just taken back. Like, because the way she was saying it was very forthright and she m earnestly meant what she said. Right. And he's like, what are you talking about? She's like, it sounds like you just need to sleep with. And she just like kind of like went through the motions. And then he comes to find out like, this is just normal. Like, but not all Japanese people feel this way. Sure. You know, like this yeah. is they, like you take case by case basis to investigate who you want to be dating. <laughs> Well, it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm but, saying? But it's so, like, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, if that's your goal, you might want to find that out in advance, you know, at the dating stage of things before right. you put the ring on it. And you're like, wait, I got the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I'm kidding. Go no, ahead. But like um, when he was talking about, I mean, I know it's a joke, but he's talking about the whole thing where it's like, oh, yeah, I would totally pay a dude to come talk, talk to, my to my wife, wife blah, 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 blah. I just think. In reality, that's actually super dangerous because uh, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. It's You're like once you get that emotional connection with someone, mm -hmm. It's like well, let me I beat you. Let me let me let me cut you off. Okay. So you're talking about a connection, which equals, which is a synonym for attachment, right? Which you're not allowed to have with an emotional hooker. They leave. Right. They leave. I get it. But like then, then you you've just hired someone who's like the best listener ever, and he's talked to your wife for hours and hours and hours, and then he leaves, and she's gonna be distraught. Like he was the best listener ever. I, I see what know. you're saying. No, no, no. I see what you're saying. And I can totally understand that, but I think that what the way he's it's an it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. I it's totally an analogy. get that it's a joke. It's but an like, analogy. It but, was funny. But the the way he is uh, equating it is to just a need that needs to be met. That's right. it. It's just this like impulse that just needs to be fulfilled. That's it. Yeah. O almost like the way a guy just sometimes just needs to, whatever. But sometimes it's like when you're in a relationship, it's like no, but I want that person to be you. Right. But <laughs> like sometimes he's just not in the mood. And sometimes you're just not feeling it and you're like, yo, I don't have the... That's why you have girlfriends. They're always ready to listen to you. Or sure. Or but sometimes sister. you want it from sometimes you want it from a male a companion of sure, some sort. Sure, 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 sure. And that's why you have gay friends, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you could, it's like a cheat code yeah. for women. Great. <laughs> Love it. Um, I don't know, man. But like, yeah, I, I, I can't. I don't actually see anything necessarily wrong with that scenario. But to me, I'm like, I don't see a heck of a lot of difference between what he's describing and a therapist. He's turning it into this broader joke, which is funny. But like in real life, women do have access to that. It's called therapy. Yeah, it's called therapy. And it's like- Get a good therapist. And so it's like, that's totally acceptable in the, you know, greater part of America to, yeah. to, to just be able to voice your feelings out. It's not as acceptable to go and get a hooker, you know? It's no. like, we already have an installation of some kind for women to get that need met. Men don't get the same treatment for their 
needs. You know for what I mean? Their physical needs. For their physical needs. Yeah, it's just not. I mean, I suppose it depends on the kind of relationship you have with your uh, significant other. Sure. If they are comfortable with you uh, just fulfilling your own needs with a video, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, but it's not the some, same. Some people aren't. It's not the same. Like that's that's not the same as some kind of physical contact. Yeah. Like, everything he's doing is thought provoking. That's that's one of the things I like. Whether you agree with him or not, you know, and there might be a whole lot of things I, you know, you disagree with. Uh, it still is thought provoking and amusing at the ver at the worst. Yeah, you know? and I appreciate that he kind of took digs at both sides. Mm -hmm. It's like no, no, this is messed up on the conservative side, but equally liberals. This is really weird as well. Yeah. So the, I appreciated that. The, the little um, dichotomy he, the, uh, of the idea between like pro-choice and pro-life, right? And calling it pro-women. It's like that would, that's actually genius. Yeah, and that's, like, that's good marketing. Yeah, while whether or not he means that in, in levity or he's le legitimately means that, I feel like that's actually a really good point. It's like if you said pro-women, it, de it destroys the other Well, argument. yeah, because... It, it also implies that pro-women means that women have a choice and that's why you're pro-women. Yeah. So you don't need to have the pro-choice. It's just like, it's pro-women. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's actually... I feel like that's, that needs to be upgraded to a 2.0. Like, you just change it. Yeah, that was pretty just, good. Just change it. That was pretty good. And I, you know what, I appreciate as well that he was very clear kind of where he stands on stuff. So when he did that joke, he's like, I just want to clarify that I agree with the the idea with the message but the marketing is what's messed up and I, I thought that was really good because he's able to kind of ride the line doing these potentially racy jokes like the one that you were like oh that was quite that was quite racy the 72 virgins one yeah. I was a little bit scared for him too because I was like I don't want like a fatwa on him, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And so, but he, he rides that line really well where he's like, this is about as far as I can push it without yeah. getting myself in like too much trouble or in trouble at all. Well, the interesting thing to me is this, he can go out there on stage and say, I believe in a woman's right to choose, right? Yeah. And like he said, very overtly, the worst thing a conservative woman is going to say is, "I will pray for you," yeah, or "God bless," or "Bless your, bless your heart." Bless your heart. Those yeah. are the two things. Whereas, if he said the opposite, the reaction from the internet could be quite bad. You know what I mean? If he said, "I don't believe in choice. I believe life starts at conception." Yeah, it would be a radically different response from the Karens of the internet. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, and so, like, that's just. It's fascinating to think about because that's also a really good point. It's just like the vitriol and like how aggressive one side will come after you for having a response that they disagree with. They will go after your job. And that's wild yeah, to me. You, you'll, you're well on the path yeah. to being canceled. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. There's like this thing called freedom of speech, you know, and freedom of thought. And But it's like, there's a lot of thought police happening on the internet. And it's like, yo, like you, I, you can disagree with someone without going after their money, without going after their job. That's just like, now you're trying to brag I'll beat them into agreeing with you by hijacking their salary, hijacking their means of survival. Right, by punishing them. By punishing them, yeah. yeah. Like, that's just wild to me. Like, and oftentimes it's like, uh, I don't know if the punishment was worth the thing that that person said. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think the struggle for him, you know, in real life is that he, he feels like someone who rides the middle, right? Yeah. He's not, he's not a left, he's not a right, he's a... He's a center yeah it just and that's how i feel a lot of times like people ask what are you i'm like center but liberal leaning or center but left leaning you know because i feel like anyone who's center it kind of leans one way or the other sure and so i say center left leaning because i do align with liberal values it, when i think about it you know long enough the thing is like the extreme of both sides is just crazy to me right like, both sides say nutty shit at, at, at the you know in in terms of like at the their extremes. marketing yeah you know it's just like what is happening um it's like i feel like both sides agree with each other a lot more than they realize if they had to be in a room alone together mm -hmm. you know i look at it akin to like indians and pakistanis it's it's like neighboring they 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 hate each other right right but you find an indian and a pakistani in Canada or Los Angeles, anywhere else in the world, they're Thaisis. And now they get along and it's great and they're best of friends and they can get married even if, you know, whatever. But like next door to each other, it's not, they're beefing. And that's that's how I kind of see it. It's like if, a, if you take two Americans, one conservative, one liberal, and they find each other in a country where most people don't speak English, they're best friends. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't talk about politics. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They're, they're trying to survive. Yeah. And so that's just fascinating to me. It's like, that's how, that, that's the kind of luxury we have here is that we can fucking hate each other at the highest level. Right. Hard. That's a luxury. It's like, we got bigger problems than this. Like he was saying, we came up with t nine more genders during pandemic. I'm like, and only three <laughs> vaccines, but actually no. only two. Sure. <laughs> But I mean, you know, to be fair, like we had a lot of thinking time during pandemic, you know, so I was like, if there's any time to come up with another nine genders, it would be during pandemic. Sure. You'd like, you spend so much time with yourself. You're like, oh, wow, I'm learning so much about myself right now. I think I'm this actually. Yeah. But you know, the thing I appreciate most about him is like, well, I, I don't agree with everything he's saying. And, nor, and it's like, and I, the, it's like I feel confident that I can say that, and he's not going to feel a way about it. But it's just like it's it's so fun that he's so brave yeah. with the jokes that he's saying because it's sometimes it really feels like humor is dead. Sometimes it really feels like everything is just pandering now, and he's like he's not pandering to anybody as far as I can tell. He is unabashedly totally authentically himself and that is so hard to do in this day and age i remember i was hanging out with a a girl and i asked her like what's your bullshit factor or something like that i forget how like i cleverly phrased it because i was trying to be cute like what's your bullshit meter and she goes what do you mean i go like like what's your percentage of bullshit in like how much when you're talking to someone uh -huh. she goes probably like 25 percent i go that's pretty honest like you know like because i think that someone so many of us today depend on our bullshit in order to connect in order to like not put the other person off oh yeah and I, i'd say probably my bullshit meter is pretty high yeah exactly because i'm always trying to be Get like along. as nice as possible yeah. and yeah i'm not out here trying to start fights and sure. stuff yeah mine fluctuates you know sometimes it's at one percent sometimes yeah. it's at 75 percent right it just depends on my mood in that moment uh -huh. I, but i think i think it more often is riding around 15% and that's my problem. Yeah. It's like, I just want to be me. I just want can I, can't, well, can I just be accepted for being me? No, you can't. Yeah. You know, and Shut like, up. exactly. Stuff it down. And, and so fortunately for him, he, he still gets to be himself and that makes me happy. And so even if I disagreed with like 50% of the things he said, I'm like, I'm still going to support him. Like I, yeah. he's, he's himself. And it's like, it's so, and he seems like very, well, he's for, funny he's, too. He, he just seems very, um, loving, you know, towards the crowd, towards people in general. Yeah. I met him once in person. He was super nice to me. Um, he's been nice from the beginning with us, you know. Uh, I just, like, just a sweet dude. Like, on stage, I almost look at him like gangster rap. It's like, <laughs> on stage, he's got this kind of, like... Persona? Edgy persona. Yeah. But he's actually a really sweet dude. You know what I mean? He's very nice. And so I find that dichotomy also well, you fascinating. you see that as well, like when he was talking to his wife at the end of the show, and she's kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. That's yeah. the real him. You know, and then he's just like genuinely like, no, you are my partner. Yeah. And like, you support me when I'm at my worst, and like, you make me a better person. And yeah. I just felt like that was just him being 100% genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so refreshing and sweet to see. Yeah. No, I really liked it. Um, I will say this. Uh, if you enjoyed his uh, uh, comedy at all, it's it doesn't get better than when you see him live. Yeah. And I feel like that's probably true for most comedians. I watched Trevor Noah live, and it, it, I was in stitches. Way more than any instance I've seen him in a special, you know, on, on Netflix or whatever. In person, when I watched him in Irvine, I was just like, dude, Trevor Noah is so fucking funny. Like, yeah. I can't take it. I was crying. And so when I was watching Akash Singh live, it was just a tremendously different experience. And I think it's because you're feeling the room as well. Yeah, like you, it's it's like a whole communal thing. Like you're part of that energy. Yeah. It's electric. Yeah. And so I, I strongly recommend, you know, if he's ever anywhere in proximity of you if you if you like his comedy go watch it in person it'll be a, a totally different experience it'll be worth your money I, I guarantee you so anyway really enjoyed this hopefully you guys did too thanks so much for hanging out i'm jabby koi this is achara kirk peace out